Welcome to Winning Conversations. Dan and Hannah finally get to sit down with the man who made this show possible, our senior pastor, Justin Bridges. We are so honored to have this conversation with him. He has such a legacy here at our house. He's been with JSMI since 2000. He became the associate pastor in 2005 and has been the senior pastor since 2007. And in this conversation, you'll hear just the heart of a man who loves God, loves his church, and seeking to do everything he can to fill the assignment he has. He is truly just the shepherd of our house in every way that we can think. And I want you to enjoy hearing another side of him that you may not get to hear. Without further ado, let's jump into this conversation. Well, hello. Well, hello. That's some serious resume, sir. (laughs) I know. Wow. It's like... I was like, I'm like, this guy... I was like, yeah, who, who, who are you talking about? Right? <laughs> yeah. That can't be him. Um, so this is probably like our so excited about this conversation. I'm excited too. I, so the heart of this is is for people like me who are newer to the church to be able to have conversations with someone like you whose schedule is so impacted, so busy, so many things going on, so many hats you have to wear as a pastor to actually sit down and just have like a fun conversation. I hope it's fun. It's going to be fun to me. I yeah. hope it's fun to you. It will be. Uh, the, well, some of these conversations will come out like... So one of the first stories you told that I remember distinctly is when you met the Holy Spirit in your sister's room. Like you had that encounter in her apartment. You've kind of talked about that story about how you were there and you just, you know, it it was a significant moment in your walk. And from that moment forward, you knew you wanted to go to Bible school. And I remember at Bible school, you're like, I'm going to be an evangelist or I'm going to be a, I'm missionary. sorry, missionary, yeah. missionary, like missionary is what I'm going to do. That's it. And then how God's like, fun story. No, you're not. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to plant you in Texas. Yeah. And you've been here. Um, and then the, I mean, Jerusalem ministry obviously is, you know, world, world famous ministry. And, and this, this house that you're in right now, like there's so much that, that we see from the outside perspective, you know, as right. people who come in that sit in the seats, that get the, the, the blessing of having you preach and, and the, all the, the other amazing pastors that are here preaching those but like, I kind of want to get into more of like the, like the sweet spot of it. Mm-hmm. My impression is the sweet spot of it. And that's more of like the challenges. Cause I don't think people, myself included, sometimes we kind of put pastors on a pedestal. Right. We kind of have an idea about what they are not at church. You know what I mean? Like, it's all like, sometimes, you know how it's weird when you see a pastor, like at the grocery store, you're like, oh, what do I say? <laughs> like, 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 you know, like, what do I, uh, do I yeah, act like I see them? Most of the time it's like. Wow, you wear normal clothes. Right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you own not suits? That's amazing. Um, and so part of that, like, the, the, what's it, like, what are the struggles of, of a ministry like this that has so many levels to it and so many layers? Like, what are some of the biggest struggles that you, as, you know, as a person, as, as, as you know, Justin Bridges, not Pastor Justin Bridges, but Justin Bridges' experiences in your normal day, in your normal walk? Yeah. I, I would say just same thing that everyone deals with, no matter what they're called to do is is understanding are you embracing the fact that that God has put a call upon my life put a there's a purpose in everyone's life and really embracing am I qualified to handle the task that's in front of me um and I think that's that's the the biggest thing um and just remaining true to who who I am no matter where I am um you know, I endeavor to be pretty much the same. If I'm in the pulpit, yes, there's going to be anointing there. So, yeah, there's some differences there. But for the most part, if we're playing golf or if we're out in public at an escape room <laughs> or or doing different things, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be generally the same person. You're not going to see someone different. Um, and this is probably not answering your question at all because this has nothing to do with challenges. You say that, but some people have a hard time being... Mm-hmm. The same all the time. Yeah. You know, I've unfortunately, and I'm sure many of us have the experience where people aren't, like where people wear different hats. And unfortunately, they're not yeah. all anointed hats. Yeah. I've had challenges, uh, especially when it first stepping into this role that I'm in, because it's you all of a sudden you have this being thrust into this worldwide ministry, um, going from working in production to developing the Bible school up to a certain point to coming as an associate minister, to then stepping in and wearing this role and wearing this title as pastor. Um, not just pastor, but now it's Jerry Savelle's, you know, church. And and so there's this, there was this pressure at first of, you know, I have to be like Jerry Savelle. I have to sound like Jerry Savelle. I have to preach like Jerry Savelle. And 
I tried that. That did not work. Um, <laughs> and so it was just, uh, you know, really discovering who I am. So I always looked at it. I had different phases of growth through, um, you know, this this journey as is being here. So the first part of it was this um, one, you know, I have to learn how to communicate in front of people. Um, then it was like, I have to learn how to, you know, lead. I have to learn how to do these things. So there was these, these challenges and, and outside or inward, either way you want to look at it, these pressures to, um, to perform. And, and so it was something I constantly had to fight and say, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not here to perform. Um, this is the success of this ministry is going to be totally built upon the grace of God on my life. It's not going to have anything to do with how good Justin is. And so I guess learning in and, and constantly endeavoring to tap into the grace of God for every moment, mm-hmm. tapping into the grace of God for, for how does a blended family work, tapping into the grace of God. How do I, how do I lead a congregation tap into the grace of God when I'm confronted with situations I've never been confronted with before? How do I want to tap into the grace of God to to um, to to learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit and tap into the, to that grace. So I think that's something I've constantly had to do. And it's not always just the growth of ministry, the growth of um, preaching, the growth of family, and and those types of things that happen. But then you have the other outside challenges, such as you know people's expectations, people you know giving you certain um, on what they expect you should be doing or they, you know, would, would come here and, and expect di- different things. And then, so then you battle that, that struggle of comparing yourself, you know, trying to compare yourself with other churches or going to church growth conferences and, and you're hearing how they're doing it. And, but you know, still coming back after opening yourself up and heart for the Holy Spirit to speak to you on what you need to do, you still had to battle that, you know what, I've got to trust in the grace of God on my life to accomplish the vision of this house I'm going to trust in the grace, um, and I, I think I'm constantly reminded of what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. And I think anytime you get out of that, like, I can do this, or I can do that, or I've got this, or, you know, I, I overcame this, or I overcame that, without always submitting it to this fact of, God, I need you. God, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I don't know how to pastor a church of a international ministry that's been around for a number of years. I don't know how to encounter these situations, but, but Lord, I know you do. So, so I, I think just letting that kind of evolve, not just into a, a preacher ministry thing, but really a, a, a life thing. Is that, I mean, so you exude this steady calmness, mm-hmm. I think is one of your defining characteristics from my perception. Um, you think I'm, uh, I'm no totally 100% like, like you just correct. have this yes. vibe of chill yes and I say it that way and I'm sure I'm offending a lot of people in Texas <laughs> 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 when I'm using my West Coast vernacular but <laughs> like, that's how I would I would describe it as like some like you, like you don't have these crazy peaks and valleys in terms of emotion um not that you're not emotional not that you don't care but you have this very calm demeanor the about peace you of God rests on him yes, yeah. yes. And, and like and I is that come from just resting the fact that you're like it's not you yeah no cat I mean that's <laughs> no, sorry <laughs> wait 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 what does that mean again <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're not lying I was just not trying to throw lying. I was just right. trying to you know he wanted to say chill so I, yeah, I figured so I'd throw out some back with one. I like that take yeah. that Gen Z <laughs> <laughs> all right um but uh, but does that mean, like like you like I don't know if you're aware of that or if yeah. that's conscious or just like a subconscious thing or just the way you are naturally now after like clear Really going through some 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 lessons and growth and development and maturity of like leadership and everything else that you just have this mm-hmm. like you don't get frazzled. I don't yeah. see you getting like overly emotional about something in a negative or po- like that's that's what I yeah. kind of see. It really is a. I mean, I I, I, w- I would definitely have to say, I definitely would have to say, it's not that I don't. Um, there's never any hills or valleys. Oh. <laughs> um, I, it's not, it's not, it's talking? not like I'm oblivious or, or don't, don't en- encounter those things. It's, I, I've just totally had to, you know, rest in God. I remember times that I've experienced some of the, the most challenging experiences of my life. Um, everything came down to this one point and it's come up several times in my life. And the Lord would always say, if you keep your heart right, you'll be restored. 
Um, so letting that equate to other areas of my life, it's I've got to always monitor my heart because one, asking myself if I'm frustrated, if I'm discouraged, if the overwhelmed feeling may come, asking myself why is that coming? What's happening? Why am I feeling this way? And 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 just trusting Lord, look, I, I just I, I've got to give this situation to you. And there could be times when I'm going through a situation, being confronted with a situ- situation, someone yelling at me, someone uh, approaching me, and in inside I could be boiling. But but I mean, just saying, Holy, Spirit, I'm and just saying to myself, Holy Spirit, help me right now. Um, I I, I want to monitor what comes out of my mouth. I don't want to I don't want to respond because one. You know, my my children could be watching me. My family's watching me. My church is watching me, um, and and so and it's not to say I'm I'm concerned about that. It's more or less no. I have to be an example, and either either the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit or not, mm-hmm. is the Word the Word or not, is the fruit of the Spirit working in my life, um, and and so and so learning how to tap into that when you need it the most. And saying that whatever I'm facing, what whatever's confronting me right now is is temporary. So so why am I going to allow it to get me off of peace? Sure. Um, when and when a lot of times I, I remember even talking to Annette about things, and she would want to be frustrated for me on situations, and and I'm saying, well, what does love say? What would love do? Well, and, and she would say, well, but what about this or, or that? I'm like, does it really matter? Do I have to win? Do, do I have to have the upper hand? Do I have to prove that? that it, no, it doesn't matter. If you, if you think this about me, so be it. I can't change what you think about me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just I, I got tired of being frustrated trying to worry about what everyone else thinks and worried about if I'm going to make the right choice or not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a... Yeah, trying trying to monitor to that is is rough, and and yeah, there's times where yeah, I may not get it right every time. That's, I mean, but the point is, I'm I'm not going to let anything else move me off what who I know who I am and what God's called in my calling as in my life. That's so good, and something else that I like I would like to pull out of that too is that you talked about your feelings. And I think it's so important. I think a lot of times out in the church world and the congregation, a lot of times we try to like push our feelings aside and we speak faith and we speak these things, which I think is an important element. But I also think that it's very important that we pay attention to those feelings because I think they're indicators for a soul issue that's going on or something that we need to change um, or work on. So I love that you talked about how you were listening to those feelings too, because mm-hmm. I do feel like that's very important. Um, I also want to go on to our next question, which is how do you balance ministry, your walk with God and your family, being a parent and a grandparent with your preparation to minister? And what does that look like day in and day out for you? You kind of touched on it a little bit um, when we brought up that last question, but I think it'd be great for you to expound on that a little bit more. I think the best way to answer that is, Family is important. That's um, that has to be, you know, the first ministry. Yes, amen. Um, and have I gotten that right a hundred percent of the time for the last sixteen years? Uh, probably not. Um, so I, I think for me, ministry and preparation is is an, I don't look at it as an event. Uh, I look at ministry and preparation as a lifestyle. Um, the word says, "Study to show yourself approved, mm-hmm. approved that you might have an answer." Um, you know, so for me, it's it's not um, okay. I got to hurry up, and I've got I've got to prepare for Sunday morning. Um, I do I do take time to prepare for Sunday morning. I'm not making that's that's yeah. not that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that ultimately, I'm always in preparation mode. There's not um, I'm always I'm always trying to have a, 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 having an ear listening to what 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 God is saying throughout the day what what's going on what's happening you know and just monitoring the times of of you know I need some quiet time right now I tr- traditionally get up and I, I you know I read the word that's the first thing I do make notes in the journal if that happens to come up at that moment but also growing up um, with with Bryn and Annette and the family I didn't want all my entire weekends evolving around, well, 
my husband or my dad is preparing for service on Sunday yeah. and then lock myself away all weekend long. Because that's easy to do within ministry. It is. It's so easy to do, yes. It, it is. And so so early on, I I typically, for my schedule, I I'm studying all week long, but I t- typically devote all of Friday um, I come up here to the office, one, because no one else is here typically, and I use that time to take what I've been meditating all week and and just pray over that, let meditate on it, formulate that in some sort of um, aspect or or in, in some sort of comprehensive thought, and and I get it to a point where I feel like, okay, this is a, this is a good direction, and um, and then from that point, I usually, you know, print those, print what I have down out. Um, and then usually on Saturdays, I usually get up before anyone else is up, and I usually take Saturday morning and just take time and pray over it and look at some things, and then make some, you know, add. You know, usually that th- that time I'll just take a pen and add some things in, and then but usually by the time the the family's up, I I'm done. You're done and ready. Um, and so pretty much I try to make Saturdays uh, a time where we are cleaning the house, whether we're doing the doing the yard. Um, I heard you love a museums. good power wash. You yes. love to use your power washer, you, I heard. You, the, the power washer, um, the lawnmower. You know, people would say, well, why don't you have someone else cut your grass? I was like, no, I, I'm, I'm a grown like man. I can cut my you grass. I, I do. Yes. I love I, I do. That. I love, I, that. I mean, I'm t- you know, I put it's my headphones on, listen to preaching, <laughs> and, you know, and this it's like, it. I'm telling you, it's, it, 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 is, it is therapeutic for me. Um, so good. So for me, it's like I never wanted. Now, there's things that will come into our schedules where Annette would come to me because we had a lot going on during the week. I didn't have a lot of extra time. Yeah. So Annette would encourage and say, hey, you know, are you good for tomorrow? If not, hey, you know, just go ahead and take take the time that you need. Um, and so she's always sensitive about that. But other than that, usually by by Saturday morning, by the time the family's up, I'm usually done. And then uh, then I do the same thing um, Sunday morning. That's and awesome. uh, it used to be for up until about, I don't know, four years ago, I would come to the church. I'd get to the church at oh, probably f- by five a.m. I'd finish. I'd finish preparing, and then I'd I'd get ready for church up here, and I'd be ready to go. But uh, you know, when I, then after I did that for a number, probably ten or eleven years, you know, the last four years, I just pretty much just take my time at home, and and I still try to get up here because I still want to be part of corporate prayer when I'm have the time to be and. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, I don't know if that answers your question. That's great. So besides mowing your lawn, which you really enjoy doing, what are some other recreational things that you enjoy doing when you do have that time off? My favorite thing to do is um, spend time with Annette. Oh, that's such a good, yeah, such a good answer. I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say going top golf with Dan. That's what I thought was about (laughs) to say, but Pastor Annette will appreciate that. Sorry, 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 Dan. No, 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 no. No offense taken. Oh. You know, so so for me, um, really, I love I, I love our family, and um, and so probably the my favorite thing to do is probably travel uh, with Annette, and then also taking trips with our family. Um, for Annette and I to travel is really probably the most relaxing because we can't really we can't really do any staycations. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do just because it, it won't happen. Because I mean. Oh, I have to do this or I have to do that. Yeah. And this happens. Oh, there's this emergency. So a lot of times the best is we can get out of the country is even better. And go silence your cell phones <laughs> or get no cell phone research service. Exactly. That's, so that's, that way that's no one the, bugs you. Yeah. Totally. That's probably the best. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Because yeah. your congregation, I know that you're so good to them and steward, stewarding them and helping them. I'm sure your phone is all the time just busy, 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 and people pulling on you. So it's great that you get to get that time away. And I, I would, yes, and that, that's true. But I also have to say I have a, amazing people around me that totally um, alleviate a lot of other pressures. Yes. So from people like uh, Tanya to, <laughs> yes. to Nikki and Eric, Pastor Phil, um, and Diane, Joseph, um, I mean, you, you guy, Hannah, and, um, you know, Alex, Troy, um, everyone um, is just, they they take a lot of pressure off me in a lot of ways. Um, and so that's, that allows me to have the other time to focus on things. So. That's great. That's awesome. You've got a good supportive team. So I have a question from our Instagram <laughs> audience for you. Woohoo! Instagram, social media platforms. So will you share with us about having an excellent spirit? Tell us your thoughts on that. Okay. Having an excellent spirit. Having an excellent spirit. First thing I have to say is excellence isn't perfection. 
there's a difference between um, perfectionism versus excellence. Perfectionism is an anxiousness to make sure everything's perfect. Yes. Excellence is is an attitude of the heart. Mm-hmm. Excellence is a is just a determination of of what can I do better. It's how can I grow. How can how can I make this look more attractive? What can I do? Um, how can I love better? How can I how can I respond differently? So excellence just isn't a matter of an appearance thing. It's a it's the core of something. It's the foundation of something. It's the structure of something. So so it's not just on how you see things on the outside. I mean, Jesus dealt with that um, when he was dealing with the Pharisees. He was saying, you know, hey, you you clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is full of dead men's bones. So, so to truly say excellence is something of an appearance is to me not correct. A correct understanding of a spirit of excellence, yeah. in my opinion, it would be doing things with God's stamp on it. Mm-hmm. Is doing things in a manner the way that God would do something. Yeah. Um, it's responding the way that He would respond. It's treating others how he would treat others. So, and I think I kind of miss this growing up um, or when I first got into serving the Lord um, was most of everything I heard was, was really external Christianity because everyone would judge that. Um, But when I understood what Peter says, that God is more concerned with the hidden man of the heart, then, then that totally changed my understanding of it. Um, because I believe religion would have kind of like the cart before the horse. So I would say, hey, let's let's become more like God, and then that will eventually affect the outward. So so often people would try to perfect the outward, but yet the inward is, is struggling. Yeah. So I, I believe you don't have to tell people to do certain things outwardly when, when you focus on the core, which is the heart. The heart. Amen. I 100% so. agree with that. I think that that's such a good, you, can, you know what? You could preach that on Sunday. That is so <laughs> good. Everybody needs to you hear got that the revelation. Hannah stamp of approval for your message. Yeah. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Sunday's well. message. Was God already speaking to you about that? I'm just kidding. But no, it's so good. I 100% agree. So I was laughing in my head when you're talking about your sermons and the preparation, I'm not laughing at. <laughs> so let me clarify that statement. <laughs> <laughs> I I have witnessed so many times you getting up to the pulpit and then being completely like being completely in the zone with the Holy Spirit saying Holy Spirit lead me here and like so in my head I'm like oh how many fire sermons have you left at the altar because the Holy Spirit's like not today mm-hmm. <laughs> you spent all week <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah all week doing his service doing his sermon you're like oh this one's gonna this one's going to do it. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be the amazing sermon. And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's like, do me a favor, put that down. We're going to go on a different journey today. Yeah. Like how many of those have you had to do? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I would say if anything, um, I would say definitely I can't calculate that, but I would say there's been a lot of things like right before I come out that the Holy Spirit will speak to me. And it will, not that I don't preach what I was preaching, it just took it in a different direction than I thought it was going to go. Um, and I think if a minister can understand what I had to understand is, is I am filling myself up to pour out. Yes. Um, so, so to me, it's not, um, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in memorization of a sermon. I don't, I don't think that is the way to handle it. I believe it's, Filling your heart full all the time to where when the Holy Spirit prompts you that you can pour it out into someone else. So I think there's been a lot of times where I, I mean, I guess honestly, there's been some t- times where I know I, it's been a prideful thing, to be honestly, because there's things that I thought was like a good revelation. And yet I'm, the Lord has me going this direction, but my mind is saying, but but remember what you were studying? And, you know, the people would really hear that. And and it was all, all of a sudden, it's like I'd go that direction not because of the Lord, because of myself. And all of a sudden it's like cricket, cricket, <laughs> cricket. And the Lord was like, why are you going that direction? And I had to have to shift and go back the other because, because I'm like, because it's like, because I thought it was a good revelation. And he goes, yeah, but it, that was for you. And they're not ready for that or this isn't the right time. And I think, I think, I can't remember who, what minister said about ministering is ministry sometimes, preaching is not so much what you what you speak, but it's also what you leave out. 
And I think some people need to monitor that you don't have to preach everything you know on, because there's times when you've been preaching and have over a thousand some messages that if you're preaching on this topic over here, then it's like you could incorporate that, but but then, but why are you trying to incorporate that? Because that's not where you need to go. So for me is the bottom line is people are there because, one, there's hurting people. We want to make people winners in life. So I always say, Lord, I love them. You love them more than I could love them. But, Lord, help me to be a, someone you can flow through to give them exactly what they need today. And, and that's most of the, that's majority of the time on how I try to prepare and you know set my heart as I prepare. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I'm no to be serious. Everyone knows as a pastor, you get six days off a week. So, <laughs> what are those days like when you just don't have you know just all day to yourself, no interruptions, like when you're not wearing the pastoral hat. Like what is actually, and honestly, like like your free time, your spare time, what does that look like? Like when it's just, you have the choice for your day, what does your day look like? Power washing to mowing the lawn. Besides, <laughs> besides the priorities of power yeah. washing and mowing the lawn. Yeah. I, um, I'm trying to think if I have a day like that. <laughs> it's like I really enjoy power washing. Like I enjoy it. No, it's it's... <laughs> Some things you do, some things you love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, no, I think it just goes back to um, nothing. Is that your ideal? Like, people, yeah, used, like, I, I, people used to ask me, like, what's your ideal day? I'm like, nothing. Like, yeah. just nothing. But that's, you know, I have the ability to do that because no one's calling me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's like... You have friendships, you have ministry f- friendships, you have you have business relationships, you have all those things. And I like to be environments where I can just be me. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm yeah. I'm kind of myself all the time, but mm-hmm. I don't want to have to be on. Yeah, sure. I don't. I don't want. I. I, I you, you just need those times where you, you can be around people, and I'm I'm not having to talk about the greatest you know revelations or the red heifer. And the prophets in Revelation, or <laughs> these these deep things, or you know, it, mm-hmm. it just sometimes it, it's just like you just want to have fun. I, I like, I mean, I, I like going to the movies. I like escape rooms. I like reading. I like reading, um, you know, mystery novels. I like, um, I, I, I like mystery shows. I like, <laughs> I mean, there's just things I like to. I like to travel. I like to spend time with the family. Um, I like to cook. I mean, those those are the things, like, if I had a, a day, it would be spend time with my family, do something fun, take some time to read, go to a park, go hiking, and cook a great meal. I've heard your ribeye is something to behold. Well, actually, it's not my ribeye. Evidently, it's Brad has the ribeye. Mine's the brisket. Brisket, I'm sorry. I, I said that wrong. <laughs> Brad's got amazing ribeye. Your brisket, however. My brisket is, no, my, my ribeye is <laughs> horrible. No, take that, Brad. Um, <laughs> So then kind of pivoting back to just, you know, how hard it is and difficult for your free time is leadership. You know, how, how is it having so many different people that you have to see in leadership that regard to like, you know, kids ministry, the outreach, the evangelism, the, the things that are, that are so important to the body of this house. Um, obviously you can't be there at every situation. So how, how is, how is leadership like a focus for you? For me is, what I've had to, I guess, continue, it's always growing. Um, so for me is trusting the people that God places around you. Um, I know areas where I'm gifted in. I know areas that I'm not gifted in. I'm not, honestly, I'm not a gifted administrator. I mean, it's not, I'm not detail oriented, um, you know. And so so for me is, is, you know, putting that in the hands of the people that are, that are gifted with it. And in, in trusting those, um, I think the people that are, that are in this room here, I think would probably say, well, I don't know if Dan, you could, but, but just with Hannah and, and Tanya, um, I'm not a, I'm not a micromanager. 
I'm not going to be, did you do it? And did you do it the way I told you to do it? And did you do it this way? And that's just not who I am. My, what I want to know is, you know, is did it get accomplished? Did it get done? If it didn't work, how could we do it better? You know, with leadership, I I would say um, it's constantly evolving because leadership can change depending on who you have around you. Um, I think I've had to learn a lot sometimes the hard way because I was a little, um, because I'm not a super vocal, charismatic, type A personality. So so how does someone that is a, um, someone like me that is what we would classify as a golden retriever, um, a, a, a pastor that's soft-spoken, still at the same time be able to, to empower the type A personalities, but at the same time, it still keep the respect. Um, and so it, it's had a, it, it has had a lot of challenges through the years, but I think it always goes back to what we started with, you know, having the grace of God, um, you know, um, just understanding that God's put me here. So if he put me here, then I have the grace to handle the leaders that we put in, we, we put in place. And, and, and just when I have messed up or when I, when I have failed situations, you know, own up to it. Go to my team, be quick to repent, um, quick to say, hey, I missed that. I didn't respond the best way to that. We could have done this different. We could have had better preparation. Um, you know, and so I think it's not taking yourself too serious as a person and, and letting it all rest on you and your shoulders. So I think it's, um, you know, just entrusting the people that God places around you and but yet know, know how to make mid-course corrections, you know, because it's always challenging when you have to make changes with leadership. And I'm not talking about necessarily people. I'm talking about adding to leadership. Um, you know, there was a season where the Lord told us that he said, you know, if you don't expand your leadership team, you won't grow beyond where you are right now. And so, so that is a whole other dynamic because now it's not just – the people that you're with, now you know the Lord's telling you you're going to add to that team. So how do you incorporate new people into that leadership structure and then trying to navigate that dynamic as roles change and 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 making sure people still feel validated, making people sh- still feel that they have a part to play and a role to play even though their assignments might be shifting. And um, and so it's it's a constant... Uh, evolving learning process that I know I need to get better at as a leader, um, you know, but um, that's. Well, you do a great job well, at all of that. And I love how you're open to evolving and you're open to change and you're open to growth because I think that's how we should be as believers in any form or fashion in our life that we should always be growing and we should always be learning. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, Coming I, from a humble heart. Yeah, too. I, I think if you... I think if you're the leader and you you aren't open to other people's ideas, then you're totally l- limiting yourself. Yes. If if I had all the answers, um, why would I need a leadership team? Yeah. That's so. What I've been saying. <laughs> and I think that goes back to your perfection and excellence yeah. example too. I think that could go hand in hand with that. Yeah. Um. So our motto is making winners in life. When you say that or hear that, what does that mean to you? I say uh, making winners in life is not um, a, a a one a one area of your life kind of thing. Like, okay, um, my area has come up in this area, but I believe making a winner in life is is something to where I think it's like, I guess the embodiment of of uh, you know Third John, where it says, "I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers." So I think it's about just coming up to another level in your how you think how you live, how you walk, how you talk, how you treat people, how you, uh, how you have courage, how you make a determination to walk out on the water, how you, you know, do something you've never done before for the kingdom of God. I think to me, that's really what making winners in life is all about and really tapping into the full potential of what God's placed on the inside of you and what you have a right to as a child of God. Amen. I love that. So I wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we were so honored to have you. Pastor so Justin. great to this be was, here. This was so much fun. And these are the conversations that are were why we started this entire winning conversation to begin with. This was 
I had such a great time, Anna. I had a wonderful time. This was so much fun. I, I had an asked awesome to be time. On this Did you have fun? Like... Oh, great, great time. <laughs> Are you just saying that? No, no. It's no wonderful time. Great time. <laughs> Thank and you. I can't wait to do it again. So. Yay! Um, and yes, we barely scratched the surface. Um, we will absolutely have many more conversations like this with yourself, hopefully. Um, you'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the show notes for links to some of our favorite messages by Pastor Justin that you might not have seen before. Be sure to come back again next Friday as we have another winning conversation. <laughs>